Mm. <laughs> He's on a Star Wars set. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to keep my video on. I just wanted to make sure it worked if I needed. That's not a set. That's his home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he believes. Star Wars set. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to keep my video on. All right. Okay. We're live on YouTube. Excellent. Everyone ready? Do we have, we have 20 participants. Okay. This is pretty good. Definitely now that it is, it is exactly four o'clock. So we are going to get started. Hello everyone. And welcome to the <laughs> January, 2021 virtual town hall meeting. I am Miss Carpenter. I'm the assistant principal at the Arkansas Arts Academy High School. We have our principal, Miss Wright, and then our CEO, Mr. Burroughs is with us as well. So exciting times, gonna try to get all of your questions answered as much as possible. And if for some reason we don't answer your question, feel free to email me or Ms. Wright or Mr. Burroughs and we'd be happy to address it later uh, if we don't uh, get to your question in time. All right, so the very first question, Ms. Wright, when does school resume for the spring semester? Hmm. Students uh, resume classes on January 7th. Um, so that's this Thursday. That's the first day that students can be back on campus for, for either campus, kindergarten through 12th grade. I think we had about four kids try to come to school today and I love the enthusiasm, but we had to send them away. So, all right, so starting on Thursday. We, of course, are having this meeting because there's a lot of changes that are happening at the high school level. So, Ms. Wright, Mr. Burroughs, can you kind of tell us why we're making changes to how we have the high school set up? Sure. Um, so it started from uh, the point of view of at the end of the semester by December, um, we were up to 55% of our students being on campus. Um, so all of our study halls were full, like we didn't have any more space to put any more students and we were already at less than six feet distancing in those spaces to accommodate that many. Um, and the last week of school, we had an additional 30 to 40 parents who wanted to know if their kid could come back to campus because they weren't being successful in a blended or virtual environment. Um, and that would have overwhelmed the study hall capacity. Uh, so we moved away from that um, and back into the classrooms to control the size uh, of number of students who are within um, a meter of each other. Um, and then we also got some additional guidance from the state um, that uh, necessitated a change in what we were doing. Excellent, anything to add Mr. Burroughs? Uh, sure. I think uh, it's really important to uh, acknowledge that uh, this program actually provides a much more secure way of keeping students in cohorts mm -hmm. so that when we're uh, having to work backwards to figure out where an infection or a contact has come, we know exactly who it is that they're, uh, they've been sitting next to or participating with. Uh, and so that, that I think is a CDC guideline that we're following with a careful, um, uh, 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 careful attention. The other is, is uh, staggering classroom transition times and one way and careful monitoring of students passing between classrooms is really critical. It's another CDC uh, guideline so that there are one way pathways where they're possible and I know Heather will talk about this in a little bit more in the future here, <clears throat> but also that uh, if individual sets of uh, grade levels, uh, teachers can organize by their floor or by their arrangement to let students pass between classes without the entire uh, class uh, passing at the same time is really critical, plus being sure that we have hallway monitors. So. The, the two pieces from CDC are keeping students in cohort, cohorts for uh, uh, good tracking and then just making sure that the transition times are carefully monitored. So that's anything else to add to that, Ms. Wright? No. Okay. And these are, just for clarification to everyone, these are changes that are rolling out this week on Thursday when we return. And our plan is to stick to this plan um, from January until mid-March when we have spring break, we'll reassess and see which direction we needed to go from there when we get to March. 
Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you for a yeah, second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> I, I now believe that the new superpower that is uh, part of the uh, Arkansas Arts Academy is called flexibility. So that even though we may have a plan for now until the close of school, there are any number of instances that may change uh, the dynamics for what we can do that are out of our control, a spiking in COVID cases, uh, uh, a change in situation, a cramping of uh, available facilities and sites. So I just want everyone who's listening to know that no matter what, we're really going to have to be flexible to consider what the changing situation is, none of which is within our control particularly, but really to make sure that students, teachers, and parents and community are kept safe. Just wanted to add that in there. Excellent. Ms. Wright, can you kind of describe uh, what our changes are? Uh, the first thing that we're changing that is the biggest is the learning options. Right. So um, we've narrowed our learning, learning options down to three. Uh, there's an in-person option where a student is on campus five days a week, uh, a virtual space option or where the student is working virtually from home uh, during the school day. So from 840 to 350 or 830 to 350. Um, and engaging with their teachers at Arkansas Arts Academy as if they were here, but they're at home. And then the last is a virtual asynchronous option for students who can't connect during the school day for whatever reason. Um, and they'll be using Lincoln Learning to address their learning um, and having uh, once a week check-ins with a teacher or administrator to make sure that they're making progress through those, um, through those lessons. And uh, Wednesdays are our biggest day that is different. Yes. You described Wednesdays. Uh, yeah. So Wednesday uh, is part of what was changed based on state feedback. Um, and th those will be a uh, fast day. So they'll have all eight classes for roughly 40 minutes each. Um, and that will be still a lot of independent learning, but it'll be taking place in the classroom. Um, and so there, there is not a virtual Wednesday option anymore. Uh, if your student chooses to be in person and they are not on campus, they'll be counted absent for that day, just like they would in a normal school day. Uh, and if they're virtual synchronous and they're not um, checking in for direct instruction through Google Meet with their teacher, um, then they would be counted absent for that as well. I know there was some concern about a student having to be on their computer from 830 to 350. I don't see that being the case. Um, the direct instruction would be the direct lecture or the direct classroom discussion, and then independent work can be done uh, not on the, um, not on a computer, but independently. Um, and that doesn't necessarily have to happen in that period. So the, the assignment may be due at the end of the day, uh, and the attendance is based on were they there for the lecture, not was the assignment turned in during that class period. There were only 70 students by the end of the semester who were still enrolled in a blended option, uh, one that allowed them to come only two days a week. And of those 70, another 10 to 15 uh, were actually here every day. They just never changed their option. Um, and then another 10 to 15 of those were never here. Um, and so they were, they were virtual students without being classified as virtual students. Um, so that the 10% of our population that that 70 represents wasn't enough um, for us to justify the extra logistics and record keeping that goes into making sure that those two day a week students are still being successful. Now, our previous semester that we just finished, some teachers had uh, Zooms and Google Meets and everything and some just posted. Uh, mm -hmm. What is our expectation for teachers with connecting with the virtual students? So when there's direct instruction happening, when a teacher is lecturing, when they're guiding a class discussion, um, then we are expecting teachers to pipe those students in through Google Meet or through Zoom uh, so that those virtual synchronous students can engage at the same time uh, with their peers. If a student wants to do um, the custom thing, uh, you want to come in for just your art classes, that's fine. Rachel and I are out of that loop. So you would be connecting directly with that teacher um, to ask them when they need to come in for those classes. 
Excellent. Um, what is the best way for our high school parents to stay up to date on different school information and uh, making sure that they're supporting the kids either virtually or in person, however their learning option is? Um, I send out uh, a weekly, bi-weekly newsletter, depending on what's going on, um, reading that. I also set up today alerts in, in eSchool, so Hack will alert you when your students' grades fall or when they're being counted absent. At the end of the week, you'll get those reports if, if your student qualifies for that. Um, we're eliminating RTI this semester. We won't need it since students will be following their schedule. Uh, so really eSchool and communicating with, uh, with teachers is gonna be your best way of making sure that you are uh, keeping up to date with everything going on. Wonderful. And also we are always looking for parents to sign up with SubTeach who provides our substitute teachers. So if you really wanna get super involved and be in the school, please sign up to be a sub. We would love to have you on our campus. Uh, how are we gonna continue doing contact tracing? So every student who's in a classroom will have an assigned seat in that classroom. Um, and teachers are making spreadsheets of that right now, which I will compile into a single document that Katie can easily search. Uh, so she can look at the kid's schedule and then click on the teacher's name and find who they are sitting around um, in their classes. Um, in the cafeteria, all of the seats are six feet apart. Um, and then we have the camera view so that we can monitor that via camera where they are and, and what they're doing in the cafeteria. Wonderful. Um, for our classes that are gonna remain virtual, such as Mr. Martinez's Spanish class, where are the students gonna go when they're attending that class? They will be in the library. In the library. Okay, what if a teacher goes into, uh, that, that is usually an in-person teacher and they go into quarantine, what's gonna happen to their classes? Uh, first, we're gonna be trying to find a sub to cover those classes. In the event that we cannot, Rachel and I will be covering those classes um, and the teacher will be delivering instruction virtually. I have a couple parents that have been uh, commenting in the Q&A that Hack has not been working. eSchool has not been working for the break. I know we just finished our update. Uh, mm -hmm. Is working for me today. Uh, do we know any reason why Hack wouldn't be working? We probably haven't updated the link that's available through the website. Um, so we'll get with our tech department and make sure that that link is, is correct and send it out to all of our parents so that you have the most up-to-date link for accessing Hack. Let me give you guys an update on that. We have updated the link for hack under district bookmarks on the Chrome browsers. Um, so students, when they log into their Chromebooks, um, they can go to district bookmarks on the bookmarks bar in Chrome and the home access center link is up to date. Um, but I still have a to-do list. I wanna send out the updated link to all parents. So they have that. So they should be receiving that probably within the next day for that updated link. Thank you, Victor. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and with access to Hack, that is where uh, parents and students are able to access their schedules, their grades, uh, how to contact their teachers, all kinds of wonderful and amazing information in the Hack. So for those and of news, you that... News updates as well. So anything yeah. that's really important you can get uh, a news update from Hack as well. Mm -hmm. I know um, definitely our high schoolers, some of them had a semester course and they're changing semesters now and changing courses. So if they need to check and see where that lies in their schedule and what teacher they have now uh, for each class period, Hack is gonna be the place uh, that they can find all, all of that information. Mm -hmm. If a child uh, that is an in-person student isn't feeling well, but they feel like they can connect virtually at home, should they do that or should they meet with their teacher the next time they're able to be on campus? A student who's at home not feeling good can connect virtually, but they're still going to be counted absent for that day. Um, so just like in, in a, a normal school day, um, they can avoid missing the lecture, um, but they won't be counted present for that day. And that's just a record keeping thing that, that we need to be able to do to keep track of where everyone is um, and, and do a better job of holding everyone accountable. Awesome. 
Uh, Ms. Wright, can you tell us what advisory is going to look like this coming semester? Uh, so advisories will be meeting with their advisory teachers. Um, for those advisory teachers who are virtual, Mr. Mr. Robert, Mr. Martinez, and um, Ms. Castleman's advisory will be meeting with me um, in the Performing Arts Center. We still have desks set up for large spaces in there. Uh, advisory for the most part will be a study hall or silent reading time. There, there is the uh, teachers have the ability to pull students who need extra tutoring or who need to retake a quiz. Um, they can organize club meetings during that time. So that kind of stuff can happen during advisory. Um, it just takes some rearranging on the teacher's part to make sure that we're maintaining uh, the number of students possible in a classroom. Okay. Uh, for our asynchronous learners that will be using Lincoln Learning, mm -hmm. uh, will they have a teacher that they can check in with or ask tech questions to? Yes, they will. Um, and if a student starts uh, with their asynchron asynchronous learning in January, but finds out that it's not a good fit, can they switch to synchronous? So those decisions are gonna be made um, by myself and Rachel on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we had a lot of jumping around um, from setting to setting in the fall semester which makes it extremely difficult to track student progress um, and um, for teachers to keep track of who has learned what. Uh, so we're really going to ask that you make a commitment to being there through March. Now, that being said, we're never gonna let a kid fail, um, but it'll be on a case-by-case -case basis uh, meeting with me to change a setting. Awesome. For a schedule change, like if someone wants to change what course they are in, who do they need to contact? Kendra McGaw for 10 through 12 or Taryn Thomas for 7 through 9. Uh, what was the ratio of students attending school at least twice per week versus uh, fully virtual students? We kind of talked about this earlier. Yeah, 10% of our students were registered as um, two, two day a week students. 55% uh, were here every day, um, which leaves the remaining 30-ish who were virtual. And of that, some, uh, probably 10% of them had custom schedules where they were coming in for just their arts classes. Um, and to, dis to tell us what your learning option is, if your student's gonna be in-person, virtual synchronous or virtual asynchronous, there was a survey sent out, spring learning option 2021. I had some long title, sorry about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> uh, but that is how you can tell us. And if you have already filled it out, but you have changed your mind, you can go in and fill it out again and I will uh, select the option that is most it's recent. The most they're, recent. All, they're all time stamped, so I can mm -hmm. see what it is. Yep. So just go back to that survey again and Miss Wright, uh, you sent out that link recently or are you going to? I did. I'm going to send it out again at the conclusion of the meeting today. So it'll go to text and email. And Rachel, if you can post the link in the chat box, that would be helpful to you. Yes, I can. Miss um, Wright, everyone's curious about replacement for video production and for orchestra. Okay. <laughs> Um, we have a replacement for video production, uh, Chetley Breedlove, who is an alumni and also uh, a local owner of a film production company in Bentonville, is going to be taking over the uh, intro to video production and advanced pro video production classes. Um, he's a filmmaker by trade, so it'll be more of a creative slant as well, um, and he's very excited to start that. For orchestra, we've interviewed several people um, and offered the job a couple of times. Uh, it hasn't been accepted, so we're looking at a creative solution um, that would partner the K-6 campus and ourselves to cover those classes until we can find the right person. I uh, hope to have an answer for everyone tomorrow. I'd just like to make the comment that uh, really highly qualified uh, arts teachers are just not laying around on their couch at mm -hmm. home waiting for a call from um, Ms. Wright. It's, it's not an easy thing to find those particular folks. And we've been at it with our uh, human resources department 
as well as all of our contacts across the region to try and figure out a solution. We're committed to that. We, we wanna make it happen, but you know, we just have to have a really good person in that position and it has to be the right person for the position. So uh, I support uh, Heather's efforts in this, re in this regard, but it's just not easy mid-year to find people like an orchestra teacher or a video, uh, video teacher. So um, mm -hmm. kudos to everybody, but yeah, I'm just really encouraging uh, patience from, from everyone in this regard. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, will teachers get time to sanitize desks and classrooms in between classes? Yes. And Wednesday was kind of the day for teachers to connect with their virtual students and use for planning and everything. Um, mm -hmm. Parents are a little concerned about their virtual students not being able to connect with teachers or even their in-person students not having the extra tutoring time. Uh, so that extra tutoring time for in-person instruction is going to come through advisory. Um, in the fall semester, um, every teacher had reduced planning time because they were using part of that planning time to monitor study hall sessions. That's no longer the case. Um, so teachers have their full planning time each day, um, which is an opportunity, an office hour opportunity um, to connect with virtual students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then we have several teachers who have been able to model what good engagement of virtual synchronous students and in-person students looks like. Um, and so they've been helping other teachers see those possibilities. Um, and that's what we expect to happen in the classroom um, for the direct instruction parts of classes. Uh, teachers are always available by email. And then once school status rolls out, which is a new communication monitoring tool that the, stu the, the school is purchasing, um, students and teachers will have the ability to text teachers as well um, without having their personal cell phone numbers. Um, so sometimes those interactions are quicker and it's easier to reply to. And it gives us a record of, of what we've been talking about with both your, you and your student. Wonderful. Um, and just to reiterate, because I got a couple more questions on Wednesday. Wednesday is a fast Wednesday. So it's mm -hmm. not an A day or a B day, it's both. So you're going to have all eight classes, all eight classes for 40, 40, 40 minutes. minutes. Mm -hmm. Advisory that day is an hour because that's where lunch will happen on Wednesdays. Um, and that gives in the middle of the week extra time for club meetings or extra time for study hall and for tutoring and things like that to happen um, before we get to Friday um, in the end of the week. Uh, for advisory, uh, what is expected for virtual students during that time? Do they need to be part of a Google Meet or anything like that? No, if they are a part of a club that's meeting and the, the sponsor has indicated that they can connect virtually, then they should do that. Otherwise, that's a really good built-in break for our virtual synchronous students um, if or virtual asynchronous students as well. Um, if a teacher has checked grades and is looking specifically at a student who's struggling, they will email that student during that advisory time and say, hey, maybe we need to schedule a one-on-one -on -one and see how we can help you. Um, and those are, we're putting in place more and more um, buffers to make sure that we're catching those kids earlier and earlier so we don't have children who haven't done anything for 10 weeks and uh, are trying to pass the semester, so. Okay. Will six feet social dis distancing be able to be followed during the school day? now that we're not in the study halls? No, uh, we're following the WHO's guidelines from uh, October, 2020, which are concurrent with CDC. A meter is uh, the minimum that they request. And there aren't a lot of studies that show that six feet is any better uh, when students are all sitting and facing the same direction. Um, in the cafeterias and when students are eating, they are six feet apart. In classrooms, they will be a meter apart. But always wearing a mask. Always wearing a mask. Uh, when students have to go into quarantine uh, or if they get diagnosed with COVID, can they become virtual students for that time period? Yes, when students are quarantined, they'll be transitioned to a virtual synchronous setting. And I will put in uh, as an attendance code a queue for the length of time that they are supposed to be quarantined. Um, that quarantine notification comes from a medical professional, either Katie or Maribel on our campuses or from 
uh, a doctor or nurse in the community. Um, because we've had some students who have gone to quarantine and never returned. Uh, so your quarantine absence code counts you as present, but a virtual synchronous student for the time that you are supposed to be quarantined. And once the quarantine is lifted, um, we would expect you to be back on campus unless we hear otherwise from you or from a medical professional. Will teachers be sending out a list of uh, requirements and expectations for their virtual students uh, like they did at the beginning of the fall semester? Yes, um, and we also have a virtual contract in place um, that Rachel will be sending to all of our students who have chosen a virtual option that kind of outlines what a student's responsibilities are, what a parent's responsibilities are, and what our responsibilities are um, to help make sure that our virtual students are as successful as, as they can be and as successful as they would be in the classroom. Uh, if it seems that teachers are not posting on the Google Meet or the Zoom, uh, they're not posting the information in time for virtual students to connect, who's the best point of contact on that? I'd say you or me. Yeah, yes, Rachel or myself. Um, my recommendation to teachers, and we have a few who do this already, is to just make a recurring Google Calendar with the Google Meet already, Google Calendar event with all the virtual students invited um, with the Google Meet already linked. Um, and that way the kids can just go to their calendar, click on the link, and the teacher can do the same from their end um, and be ready to start class on time every day. Also, our uh, virtual synchronous students should be following the bell schedule. So at 8.30 on Monday and Thursday, they should be in their first hour Google Classroom ready, ready to go, regardless as if a teacher said, we are for sure having a Google Meet today. They need to be looking at whatever assignment is posted if there is a Google Meet and designate that 8.30 time to that class period all the way to 3.50. Uh, what is the realistic expectation of students graduating this year? Are they college ready? I would say that this year's graduates probably have a better understanding of how to manage their own time and deal um, with unexpected crises than any graduating class prior. Um, as far as the content that they're being taught, um, we are on par with the nation as a whole as in being about a month behind. Um, AP teachers actually got an update for AP of like, here's where you should be. And every AP teacher I've talked to um, and, and the college board is taking into account that uh, very many schools are in an all virtual setting uh, and that the pandemic has made things uh, difficult <laughs> to say the least. So they have, uh, every AP teacher on our campus is ahead of where the college board has said that they should be, um, which is a good thing for us. Um, and uh, we'll be doing our second set of Renaissance screening with all of our students starting Thursday and into next week, um, which will give us a better understanding of where students' math and reading skills are and where we need to target to make sure that every kid is ready to go to college when they graduate in June. I should say that this is not a situation that is unique to the Arkansas Arts Academy. This is uh, endemic across the United States, uh, here in Arkansas and other places. There's going to have to be a national reconsideration about what success looks like in this particular year, and maybe even in the next year and then the next year, because we've had students who've been involved in a, a, a challenging program and process that have not been able to uh, accomplish all of their goals and all of their dreams. So let's understand that this is not unique to just us. This is everybody who is falling into this particular situation. And you know, we'll, we'll get through this. We will get through this and we may need to find creative ways of being able to explain to colleges, universities or future career opportunities how successful our students are in ways that are different than what was the grade that they got in this particular class? Agreed. Um, I got two more questions on here. Uh, oh, a third one. Uh, but th these two that I just got are about absences. So we kind of already addressed that if someone is quarantined, that's an in-person student, then they, they're not going to be marked absent. They can be a virtual student. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but what about a virtual student that 
can't connect virtually such as for a doctor's appointment or something then uh, they're counted absent for that day which is not a bad thing it would it'd be the same as if they were in the classroom uh, they would be counted absent for that time they'll have the opportunity to make up work uh, just like any other absence um, so in the past information came out that um, absences impacted our funding uh, that is apparently not true um, so if your kid needs to be absent because they have a doctor's appointment or because they're ill those are things that that happen even to adults uh, when we have to take sick days um, so we definitely don't want you to feel any added pressure um, you know life happens sometimes and we're always here to help make sure that kids can make up the learning and um, anything that they may have missed in that process excellent and we do not have excused and unexcused absences we have absences, absences. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's it. Yeah, the only things that I code differently um, are bereavement days. So if you if there's a, a death in your family, um, I code those differently. College visits are coded differently, um, uh, and a court visit is is count, um, entered differently. But if you're if you're absent for a doctor's note, or if you're absent because you're uh, you're sick, those just go in as as absences. Because uh, ultimately, the state doesn't care why you weren't in the class. They just care that you weren't in the class. Um, I believe we talked about this earlier. Uh, parent of a virtual student wanting to know how the, they can be more supportive of their student. Mm -hmm. um, for any student who's virtual, definitely thinking about a space that is designated for you to learn in. Um, if your student is trying to work from their bed um, and sometimes even from their bedroom and it's different for every kid, but in most cases, having a space that is your work space, it allows you to focus um, better. Um, and then remembering um, for your own mental and emotional health, like getting up, getting dressed, uh, getting a shower, brushing your hair, getting ready to leave, like you're gonna leave for the day, uh, can be a mental boost and help put you in a more productive frame of mind. If you're in your pajamas all the time, um, that can lead to uh, mental and emotional issues, as well as just not really feeling like you're, you should be productive. Um, even pajama days on campus are, sometimes it's difficult for me to focus because uh, I'm in my pajamas. So um, definitely making those efforts. And then at the first hint of trouble, um, it's very important that teachers or that parents and students advocate for themselves when they don't understand. Um, even in the classroom, it would be important to speak up. Um, but when you're sitting in the classroom, I can read your face. I can read your body language and know that you didn't understand even if you didn't ask the question. In a virtual setting, it's gonna be more important for you to speak up and say, yeah, I don't get that. Um, or I really didn't understand. And there are ways for you to do that privately without, um, without acknowledging to an entire class that you didn't understand. Um, but it's definitely gonna be very important for you to advocate for yourself um, because as teachers, we're trained to read body language, but we can't read the body language if you're behind a screen, especially if your camera is not on. Uh, back to our absence policy real quick, Ms. Wright. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want parents to submit a doctor's note when it's yes. um, So I would ask for a doctor's note for, for one very important reason. Um, at 10 absences in a class, you have the potential to lose credit for that class. Um, and that comes down to a hearing looking at why you were absent that many times. Um, so if we have the documentation from a doctor that says, you know, I was dealing with complications from diabetes or um, I have an ongoing gastrointestinal issue or I'm dealing with migraines or even I just have regular therapy appointments. Those are situations where I'm not going to recommend that we remove credit from you because we've got the documentation that you were dealing with something um, more important than what was going on educationally for your physical or mental health. Uh, if we don't have those, that documentation um, then the conference becomes a, you know, why are we missing school? And we have some other options that we take um, to make sure that families are supported in getting their student to school and learning and avoiding educational neglect. 
Um, will a bell schedule be sent out for the fast Wednesdays? Yes, I double checked it with my teachers today and I will share that with everyone uh, after this meeting. I'll post it on all our medias and everything. Um, oh, when or how will our students receive their new class schedule? That Mr. Craig is working on the Home Access Center, the hack link. So that should be up and running and that's where all of your information for your schedules are going to be. There may be some minor shifting in schedules um, after we've got everyone's response to whether they're going to be in person or virtual and which type of virtual. Um, I'm going to be looking at student schedules to see if I can do some shifting um, to make sure that uh, we have the minimum number or the least number of students possible in a classroom. Um, with our core classes, that's that's fairly simple because there are multiple sections of everything. Um, so I will be looking at that. So schedules may shift a little bit uh, and we'll send out a reminder Wednesday evening that one, your schedules are set in hack and that's where you should check to see what your classes are. And two, to remember to plug in your Chromebooks so you're ready for school bright and early Thursday morning. Yes. Are we gonna have any uh, policy for teachers getting the COVID vaccine? So let me jump on that one. Uh, the the uh, Arkansas Department of Education hasn't given us specific guidance about what they consider to be the preferred route. Uh, most, uh, most policies that have to do with employees uh, getting the vaccine are left to the employer uh, specifically, but we also have to recognize that educators are listed in group 1B, uh, which is after uh, uh, first responders and elderly in uh, home situations. And so there is an expectation that teachers should, and we hope would get the vaccine over a period of time. Also recognizing that at least uh, uh, today that that vaccine requires two shots. So there's a certain distance between first and second. So I think we need to look really carefully at what our uh, community looks like and eventually do a survey of our own personnel about when the vaccine is available, are you willing to take it? And then we'll have to make a decision about whether that impacts the security and safety of our learning environments if, uh, if there's a significant number of people who are not interested in uh, participating in the vaccine. Um, I think we should all recognize that even after you've been vaccinated, no matter when that happens, it doesn't suddenly mean that you don't have to wear masks and everything is normal again. I mean, that you're we're still in the same situation that we were before the vaccine because the kind of immunity that vaccines provide to the general population will take a very long time to take effect. And so we'll still need to be uh, careful and uh, mindful of being safe until we feel that we've reached that particular maximum kind of immunity that vaccines can provide us. So I. I, I, I wish I could say that here's the answer, uh, but we're discovering this to, as the vaccines are being unveiled, you know, whether it's the Pfizer or the Moderna or the, the new one from England, I guess it's called the Cambridge, you know, all of those uh, particular vaccines have different kinds of impacts. So uh, my, my best uh, response uh, is stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. Burris. That's a, yeah. hard, that's a hard question to answer, it really it is. is. Um, since many students are going to be changing, there's a lot of changes going on on Thursday and the first few weeks back, do we feel like we're going to lose some instructional time as everyone figures out this new system? I don't think so. If we do, I think it would be minimal. Um, you know, high school students know how to go to class. Um, and high school teachers have plans for the, the full 85 minutes um, for in-person instruction. Um, I mean, I can't predict that. I don't think it will be, I don't think there will be much learning loss any more than the beginning of any semester is um, with semester changes uh, for schedules and meeting new teachers and recovering from being gone for two and a half weeks. Like there's there's always a recovery period uh, in January anyway, when you're coming back and resetting schedules, so. That's one of the reasons we really like coming back on a Thursday. So you get a Thursday, a Friday, you get to see all of your teachers. 
have a weekend to figure everything out and get really ready to go on that coming Monday, the 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, will social distancing be able to happen during lunchtime? Yes. And how? Um, so there we have the, the eight foot table set up in the commons. Um, there will be eight foot tables set up in the performing arts center as well. Um, there will be an eating space available outdoors for any children who want to eat outdoors or whose families want them to eat outdoors for the added safety. Um, all the seats are six feet apart. Um, and the, once they choose a seat, that's where they will be sitting um, unless they are going outside for a walk for the, the last like 10 minutes of class or of, of their lunch. Um, so yes, that is the one place where six foot social distancing will happen consistently on campus is when they're eating and they don't have their masks on. Um, and then we've limited the ability for them to move and how many chairs are at each desk or at each table. And they're in their cohorts, not mixing with uh, grade levels. Yes. Uh, what resources or support are available for virtual students' mental health? How can parents help with depression from the lack of interaction? Um, Kendra McGaw and Taryn Thomas are actually probably better, <laughs> better people to answer that question. Um, I know that we have some teachers who are reaching out to start the, uh, to, to do virtual clubs and things like that. Um, Rachel and I are happy to do after school mixers with our virtual kids. Um, we've tried playing games and things like that in the past just to give them an opportunity to socialize and haven't really gotten much participation, but those are things that we'd be happy to try again. Um, being tied into the campus as much as possible, reading the news, um, engaging in those class discussions and you know, sometimes it can be a boost just to open your mouth and speak. Um, so I know that we have a lot of students who prefer to have their cameras off and to not actually say anything uh, when they're virtual, but getting to hear your voice um, recognized in a classroom and um, to interact with your peers that are there can, be, can really be a boost, even, even virtually. Um, in professional development where I have to be virtual or a teacher has to be virtual, um, it's, it feels more real when you <laughs> actually speak up and answer the questions rather than typing them in the chat box. Um, so it, it just builds those connections. So definitely encourage your kids not to just type their questions in the chat or, um, to send the teacher an email, but to, to actually engage in the class discussions and to ask questions in those virtual sessions. Great recommendations. And our counselors, uh, like Ms. Wright said, they'd be able to answer those questions even more. I know they have shared resources with the kids on their class of Google Classrooms that they have. Uh, and, and if you want to reach out to them, they are really good at responding to their emails and taking mm -hmm. phone calls. So any, any support you need, our counselors are absolutely amazing. How will virtual students know what lunchtime they have? Um, so, uh, Second, your second period teacher and your sixth period teacher dictate when you have lunch on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday. Um, so you have, uh, they'll tell you whether you have first, second, or third lunch, and it'll probably be a calendar invite as well, like just a rem reminder that this is the time that's designated for you to eat lunch. On Wednesdays, it's advisory. Um, so again, virtual synchronous students, unless you're being asked to be there, advisory is time for you to have a break anyway, um, but seventh and eighth graders will eat lunch first on Wednesdays, uh, ninth and 10th graders will have second lunch and 11th and 12th graders will have third lunch. Um, and those times will be posted on the bell schedule that Rachel will send out. Mm -hmm. uh, how are positive COVID cases gonna be handled this semester? A few times last semester we went to all virtual. So that'll depend on how widespread the positivity is. Um, and who is impacted. Um, that's, and Mr. Burroughs corrects me if I'm wrong, that's not a decision that we get to independently make. We have to consult with the state before we're allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so we call and say, this is what we would like to do. This is what we're seeing. And then uh, the state either okays or modifies our plan or tells us that we're not allowed to do that. 
I think it's the breadth of exposure uh, that we're really uh, referring to here. So yep. if the person who is COVID positive is a person who came in contact with all students in the schools, that certainly is a different situation than a very limited cohort uh, that has a single student who is positive or symptomatic, and we know exactly who it is that they've come in contact with. Um, again, we're <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, we're not in charge of how that happens because we're not in charge of the virus. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the smart thing here is to really look at the uh, range of exposure uh, and what the risk is uh, in, in, in ensuing days that follow after that. And I think we've taken a pretty conservative route uh, for Arkansas Arts Academy and it's, it's proved particularly well. But it's really important to note that transmission of COVID inside the school is very rare. It doesn't happen from teacher to student or student to teacher. It happens mostly from adult to adult, but that any of the exposures that we're really talking about come from the community. And it's our responsibility to make sure that the community is, is uh, protected as well as the student populations. Am I correct, Ms. Wright? Yes. Okay. amount of questions. Any more questions, anyone? Those were some good ones. Mm -hmm. Great clarification. Hey, uh, uh, I always hesitate to call you Heather because you know we're on a public situation. <laughs> Whenever anybody calls me Mr. Burroughs, I just laugh. So um, could you talk about passing between classes and uh, one way, multiple pathways to get from class to class and from experience to experience? Sure. Um, so there is only one hallway that in our building that lends itself to unidirectional um, movement. Uh, so in the A wing, which is all science classes, all English classes, history classes, um, and half of the visual arts department for high school will be a unidirectional hallway. Um, so signs will be posted. You have to go this way. These are the only upstairs. These are the only downstairs. Um, and teachers will be out in the hallways monitoring to make sure that the direction is, um, or that the flow of traffic is unidirectional and that students are moving quickly from one place to another. Um, in the other hallways, uh, it'll be just like a, a divided highway. If you're headed, you're always going to be, uh, the wall is always going to be on the right-hand side of you um, headed wherever you are headed. Uh, in um, the seventh and eighth grade wing, those teachers um, will be looking at how they can stagger um, dismissal so that there are fewer students in those hallways. Um, in the in D wing, um, which is high school math, and then all of the performing and, and music classes, um, teachers will be out in hallways, making sure that we're staying um, away from each other and that we're moving quickly from place to place. So could you uh, also, uh uh, help uh, those listening uh, mm -hmm. about dismissal, about uh, how car line is going to work or when Absolutely. students the um, go Yes, so uh, we're going to be dismissing any students who drive themselves um, at 340, uh, depending on like if they're actively engaged in learning in the classroom, that learning comes first. Um, but most of our most of our drivers are seniors who are not here at 340 anyway. Um, we want them out of the way so that car line can run more smoothly. Um, and then all um, students who ride a bus, students who walk downtown or walk home, um, and students who uh, will be dismissed at 350 to exit the building on the east side. Um, that's where the bus loading zone is and anyone who's walking will exit on the east side. Anyone who's a car rider will come down to the commons uh, and we will walk through and call names like we have been the entire semester. So they'll be socially distanced in the commons waiting to hear their name called. As soon as they're called, they're headed out the west side of the building uh, where car line happens. Um, and we typically have car line done um, in five to 10 minutes. Where are students gonna go before school? So before school, um, the doors open at 7.30. Between 7.30 and 8.15, 
Seventh, eighth, and ninth graders will be sitting in socially distant seats in the Performing Arts Center. Tenth through twelfth grade students will be sitting in socially distant seats in the Commons. If they have the opportunity to eat breakfast during that time, if they would like to. At 8.15, all students are dismissed to their individual classrooms. Any student who is still eating breakfast or any student who comes in between 8.15 and 8.30 and needs breakfast will eat in either the Performing Arts Center or the Commons before moving to class. And then class starts at 8.30 a.m. What about our seniors that only have a couple classes? Can they come and go to those classes? Mm -hmm. And they just need to sign in and sign out at the front Sign office. in and sign out so that we know that you're in the building. Um, but that is, that's the way that they have always operated. Um, yeah, that's no different for seniors. Uh, and this video is being recorded. It's live on YouTube right now. And you can refer to it on the Arkansas Arts Academy YouTube page at a later time if you want to re-watch it. Yes. Will community spread uh, of COVID be taken into account uh, when we pivot to virtual? Go, going back to what Mr. Burris and Ms. Wright said that it, we don't get to make that decision. The state makes that decision. But yes, that's taken into account. Into account. Uh, whatever area we're in, that's where they look first. Uh, can you explain what a cohort is, please? A cohort is a group of students who share um, similar instructors. Uh, so like seventh grade would be a cohort because they all have uh, the same teachers for English, social studies, science, and math. Um, eighth grade would be another cohort. So those groups of students who share um, similar spaces and we try to keep them separate from the rest of the school uh, to avoid additional um, potential transmission. So I noted in the uh, comments or the questions uh, from attendees, a question about uh, uh, what, what's gonna happen uh, when my students check into school. Uh, and, and in the sense of in the next couple of weeks, there may be a spike or an increase in cases either within our community, within Arkansas or nationally. I, I, and I, I would, I would ask um, Ms. Wright to talk about that specifically, but nothing really has changed in regard to students coming in, being examined, if you're uh, symptomatic or asymptomatic, that will just make this very much more special attention to students coming in during this time frame, especially in the next month or two, to make mm -hmm. sure that we're uh, 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 evaluating students when they come in and being responsive when they are not feeling well. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. Not, none of the um, COVID screening is changing at all. So all of that will still happen when students arrive on campus before they're allowed to set foot in the door. Um, they still have to pass the screening, including a temperature check. Um, and we appreciate all of those parents who have been keeping us up to date on um, their children who have tested positive over the break um, so that we can continue to do uh, contact tracing on our end as well. And we would encourage you to continue to do that. Um, and we have access to nurses kits for our own staff and uh, administration to make sure that they're regularly checked so yes. that it's not left to when they might be feeling unwell, but really that we're sure that they're well. Yes. Yeah. How many students are in a cohort? It's by grade level. Basically. It's by grade level. Um, so if you're looking at the entire cohort, there are 110. Um, some percentage of that will be virtual. Um, and I can't tell you those exact numbers as they're still rolling in right now. Will meal, meal pickup still be offered? Yes, our yes. wonderful cafeteria ladies, Miss Ariel, uh, Miss Tanya, they are doing an excellent job of doing the meals for our virtual students. And an additional question on this, uh, is there an alternative pickup time? They are willing to work with whatever time that you want. Feel free to email them. Uh, they always include their email on the sign up form. Or I think there's a note section at the bottom too that you could say I need a different time. Uh, but we had meal pickup this morning. There were some people that couldn't come this morning and pick it up. And Miss Tanya immediately said, oh, I'll meet them whenever they need to tomorrow. So they're, they're extremely flexible. 
our cafeteria workers are amazing and keep us all nice and fed, mm -hmm. whether we're here or not. <laughs> Uh, the cohort answer makes sense for the core classes, but what about electives? Uh, there's, it's a high school. The kids are going to mix and mingle. We're going to try to keep them as separated as possible. Yeah. Any more questions? Again, if you have any questions that you think of later after our uh, town hall or any time, feel free to email any of us. Uh, we're really trying to answer our emails as fast as possible. If we don't email you immediately, it's because we had to ask someone else what the answer is. And we just want to make sure we're getting you the best answers possible. So the, from the chat, the will virtual students be expected to just be observing instead of being engaged? No, engagement is uh, what we're looking for. And we've talked to teachers about how to do that today um, and making sure that they're, they're still answering questions and, and being asked for their opinions and those kinds of things as if they were sitting in the classroom while they're engaging synchronously. I can give you a perfect example of how virtual and in-person would be engaged at the same time because I've watched it happen in multiple classes. Um, the teacher has a list of those students who are engaging virtually and is asking questions and making sure that their opinions are heard, just like if they were sitting in the classroom. Um, so if they're talking about math, it's, hey, Jake, uh, what do you think your answer is to this question? Or um, Ariel, do you have any questions about how uh, Gatsby relates to Daisy and the Great Gatsby. Um, so they're, those teachers are doing those things and they're the models for their peers right now of how to do that at the same time. Um, we're, as a district, we're investing in additional camera and microphone equipment to make that easier to happen and easier to hear in the classroom. Um, but it's definitely possible to engage two sets of people um, I do it every time we have a faculty meeting because I have virtual teachers as well as teachers in the building. Um, it's possible. Definitely. The more we do it, the better we get at it. For sure. Exactly. Uh, any idea how soon we'll get the info to get into Egg Connect? I guess hack. Uh, Mr. Craig's working on, on that link. It should. Yes. He'll he, be sending it right out. Yeah. He's busy right now hosting our it's webinar. A, it's yes. actually sent out. Oh, there you look, go. Look at See? Him multitasking. It should be in every student email and parents' email from grade Thank 7 you, through Craig. 12. Cool. <laughs> so this is nothing that uh, a CEO or superintendent can require of teachers or administrators or even parents or students. But one of the great advantages to being a a participant at the Arkansas Arts Academy is the uh, unique opportunities to be involved in creative endeavors, whether it's dance or music, theater, visual arts, media, technology, or otherwise. And all of those are reasons that our, our parents and our community have decided to select this particular place for their young people's education. So I, I can't make that happen in exactly the same way that we had always planned it to be. Uh, mm -hmm. during this particular time, but I'm going to encourage something uh, uh, among students and teachers, parents, and even administrators to, to think of ways to bring joy back into our instructional and learning experiences. And in a certain way to, to think about how we might incorporate surprises in our instructional strategy so that the idea that we're in a place at a particular prescribed time or trying to fulfill work that is being managed by teachers or I'm the student and I'm at home is to figure out ways to actually create some spontaneity to these experiences so that it's a surprise. And that instead of just hiding behind uh, a, 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 a no camera kind of experience, but instead to think about ways that you can bring lightness and joy into those experiences. And maybe that has to start with teachers, 
But you know, in fact, it might come from students first. And so I'm gonna encourage that kind of spontaneity and joy to find its way back in. A little bit of humor goes a real long distance in these experiences and uh, it helps to build our own community. I can't require it, but I can sure hope that it happens. Tools and support for virtual performance. Any teacher who is trying to take on a, a virtual performance has been offered all sorts of support um, and tools available. Uh, they just have to ask. Um, I'm not an expert in every arts field and neither is Rachel, but both of us want, um, want those joyous performances to continue to happen, even if they're in a virtual setting. And we share things that come across our desks frequently with our teachers. Um, and are happy to help find resources, money, time to make them happen. Uh, and Mr. Burroughs is a part of that as well. Yeah, you know, there's a, a really interesting, not too expensive, uh, uh, not software, but app that actually allows for singing and orchestral instrumentation to become synchronous. So as opposed to everybody's in a one or two second lag and it doesn't sound really good because everybody's trying to be part of uh, an experience that doesn't actually work very well. These new apps actually allow and speed up and slow down certain kinds of participation. So it sounds exactly as if you're in the room together. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to explore those particular opportunities. And I just saw one recently that, you know, when, uh, this goes back to this idea of surprises or innovation. Um, it's called Merge Cube and it's a, a three-dimensional uh, augmented reality uh, piece where information that's part of the curriculum can be seen through a cell phone or through other kinds of devices that gives you a three-dimensional uh, reveal. And it's just another way, as opposed to looking at information on a, a two-dimensional piece of paper, to be able to experience what does the human body look like uh, from the inside out? Uh, what do the planets look like when they're circling the uh, the, uh, the sun and throughout the solar system. And, and these are not expensive propositions and guess what? They're available at Walmart. Okay, so that's really great. <laughs> Victor, I've been informed that the uh, eSchool app is not working. The link that you sent is good, but the app is having a problem. Uh, I recommended deleting it and downloading it again. And this parent has said that they tried that already. They outsmarted me, uh, and, but that, that did not solve any of the, uh, the issues. So uh, that, I don't think that's something that we can fix because the eSchool app is not our app, but do you have any su suggestions? At this moment, no, but I do believe I've seen in the uh, mailing list that we have from around the state that others have been reporting the same issue. Um, I didn't really look at that email very quickly today. So if you give me a moment, I'll take a quick look and see if there's anything further. And I'll come back. Just a moment, mm -hmm. or I'll be right back. Okay, it's easy. <laughs> uh, how can we check last semester's final grades? So your semester grades for last semester are not yet finalized. That will happen this Friday, and then report cards will be posted on Monday, January 11th. And kind of on that same note, there was some issues with some teachers posting a lot of grades and some teachers not posting grades until the very last minute. Do we have some clear policy on that? The policy is that grades get put in at least once a week. <laughs> That's what we're sticking to. <laughs> as, much as, as much as we can. With our new e-school update, hopefully, I know that was an issue and was that September and October that it kept deleting stuff on us? Yeah, there were weird things happening with eSchool in the fall a couple of times, um, but the eSchool 20.4 update um, has a lot of really cool tools for teachers and for, for parents. Um, so if a teacher is, is changing a grade because a student retook a quiz or needed to redo an assignment um, to show better mastery, you can actually see those historical grades um, across the entire process. So I'm aware that the policy is not followed by all the teachers. And it's a goal of mine for this semester. I'm out of questions again. 
So I'll, I'll make a comment among our wonderful community that's listening here is that every year, because this is the way open enrollment works in public charter schools, we have open enrollment to fill spaces that are available kindergarten through 12th grade. So if any of you know uh, someone who is particularly interested in having their kindergarten student enter this uh, coming uh, next school year, our open enrollment is available now. Uh, you have until February 22nd to file an open enrollment request. And so there are always, because this is the way it works in the world, there are always 80 seats available at kindergarten every year because <laughs> it's an empty space. And so if you, knew, if you know folks who are interested in having their uh, uh, youngsters attend uh, Arkansas Arts Academy, this is the time to get in. We don't get to pick who it is because it's a, it's a lottery process, but we just would never want to have an uh, a situation where there weren't enough people interested to fill the spaces that we do have available. And uh, so there's 80 seats available at kindergarten. Share that with your friends and the information is available on the website. Uh, Victor, is there anything you wanna say about what that looks like? I'm sorry, I was looking for information on the eSchool app. <laughs> I apologize. So the um, we're talking about open enrollment. Is, is on the web page. You can just click on it, but that yep. every, whether it's elementary or secondary, you can, you can find that information by calling the school or stopping by to pick up the uh, necessary information. So let's just make sure we've got 80 kindergartners in seats starting next school year. Yes. And just to update everyone, I've, I've seen just the same thing I'd mentioned that the, the app is not working and there is a ticket open to get to work on that, but I don't have any more information than that. Okay, we appreciate you checking. Thank you, Victor. Sure. Um, are we planning on doing a training session for parents on how to use eSchool, especially with the new updates? Yes, uh, so that will probably happen next week. Um, after school one day, we'll, we'll do a virtual setting with me um, where I'll walk you through all the things um, in Hack that are different um, and how you can access all that information. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do that next week. So next week, we're gonna learn how to use Hack. You're gonna get a bell schedule from me today uh, virtual students are going to get a virtual contract from me on Wednesday, and we're all going to come to school on Thursday. Don't come to school tomorrow. <laughs> come to school on Thursday. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank okay. you, everyone, for attending yes. and asking questions. Again, just want to reiterate, I think for the fourth time, email us. We will answer your emails. I promise we will. Give us a couple days if it's a very <laughs> difficult question, but I will answer your email or find the person that can. Uh, we appreciate all of you. We appreciate your support. I know it, times are tough. Changes are really hard, but we're going to keep going strong. We're going to do our best. Yes, and we're looking forward to seeing students again on Thursday. It's been rather lonely in the building without them. It really has been. It's very quiet. Mm-hmm.